It might not come across as obvious to a lot of people, but look where it stopped here, right? It stopped right on the five-day moving average that's crossing with the 50. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope, hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So uh, make it 10 days in a row, right? Qs are up uh, 10 days in a row. Uh, market is incredibly strong. Uh, it's pretty much the same song and dance here. Um, you have names that come out of the blue, put in ridiculous moves. Uh, the option order flow uh, still continues to be incredibly strong. And again, when you have names like a QS, and granted, this is not a, a household name, but when you get a, a move like this, and this is a move, you know, two-week move, and the stock was up $14, and you look, and you look in the after hours, the stock is up another 10 It's kind of a big deal, right? And it really does show you how strong this market continues to be and it's playing out in the theme that, again, we're just kind of on cruise control uh, going into the latter weeks of uh, the fourth quarter. And hopefully we'll start spilling uh, into the first quarter. But I think the most important part, what we saw today, um, kind of confirming how strong the speculation money is, is Tesla. You know, we talked about this last night uh, on the video. I thought uh, any dip today, literally any dip is, uh, you know, was pretty much a really good opportunity uh, to get back into uh, any trade that you might have uh, sold on the close. And, and again, just because of the fact that the, the hedge funds that continue over and over and over again, uh, continue to front run what's going to happen on the inclusion of uh, December 21st on the S&P. And when we woke up this morning, you saw the news of a $5 billion offering. Um, and it, 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 exactly what happened we talked about last night happened today. They got trapped. Again, eager late shorts got trapped on the rising 60-minute support. This is kind of like clockwork almost. But now you had a catalyst that made the shorts believe that, you know what, yesterday was the high. It can't possibly go any higher. But again, guys, keep this in mind. Again, there's still two weeks left for these funds, to these hedge funds, to continuously front run the indexes, what has to happen uh, on December 21st. And not only did they hold this rising support, the stock goes green, and not only does it go green, right? Not only does the stock go green, it ends up up $8, uh, up eight bucks on the day, takes out the previous day's high, and oh, by the way, uh, it's up another six, seven after the close. So again, incredible, incredible moves here. You still have ridiculous amount of staying power in these names because again, there's no reason. If you look at the landscape of where we are just structurally, there's absolutely no reason for any type of selling pressure. Yeah, of course you can have days that the market needs to come in just to be a little more structural and all that good stuff, but there's really no catalyst right now for everybody to turn around and say at once, you know what? I'm out of the market. I don't like what I'm seeing. Let's get the hell out of Dodge and reassess January 1st. It just doesn't work that way. And again, slowly but surely, we started seeing other names that we've been watching for a very long time starting to turn up. And that's the most important part. Apple uh, came out with, it seems like a couple of products, uh, Apple Fitness, yada, 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 some headphones, who the hell knows. But the point is, you can see how close Apple's coming to really busting out. If you look at the option order flow, you're seeing near-term expiration, 127, 130 calls. And again, all Apple needs to do is take out this whole channel that started on October 13, and it's going to start making its move up. So again, something like this, you definitely have to keep an eye on. Netflix, you know, I thought did a pretty good job um, today on that dip. It touched the five-day moving average again. That's kind of the holy grail of short-term sentiment. We've been kind of talking about this in nausea uh, for years and years and years, how the five days is probably the most uh, disregarded area that people don't even acknowledge, but it's pretty real in here. You can see here, every single time it hits the five-day moving average, it bounces, 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 and uh, today was no different. So again, this whole formation is still ready to go. Uh, maybe it has one more day rest. Maybe it, again, maybe it just really starts going and explodes. Who knows? But the point is, again, you can see how the bulls are starting to set up. I still like this thing, obviously, for tomorrow. Uh, Amazon, first life, right? First, first life we've seen now uh, since the run-up for about two weeks ago. And again, it might 
not come across as obvious to a lot of people, but look where it stopped here, right? It stopped right on the five-day moving average that's crossing with the 50. At any confirmation, look at the 60-minute view, right? Look at the 60-minute view, guys. If any confirmation starts taking out this channel and this thing closes above 3,200, it's going to start an upward bias as well. So we're set up, man. We're, we're, we're definitely, definitely set up. Uh, look at Square as well, right? You have Square long formation here, long, long formation here. Uh, this whole top channel here eventually is going to snap. But when it does, it might start seeing this 224, 225 level. So again, the bulls have to be uh, very, very happy wherever they are. Uh, the sellers are very comfortable at these levels. And that's the name of the game. No selling pressure. Uh, fourth quarter, traditional, very, very good action in the markets. And the most important part is people are happy right when holiday time rolls around you're going to be in a better mood more people equals more participation equals more liquidity and that's why these names are getting some really really aggressive moves even a name that we discussed last night right the ZS's of the world we talked about last night you know keep an eye on the ZS again you had this one bad you know, big move and yet two days in a row of smaller smaller channels and this thing absolutely went ballistic today uh, came a little bit short of taking out the previous day's high but again that's where the rotation is even if you're getting a res day and a lot of these names they're still coming back for them two three four days later and they're setting up all-time highs one name we should be watching it's not there yet okay it's not there yet and that's the most important thing I want everybody to understand that's watching uh, this broadcast we started seeing some pretty good call buying coming into this name towards the end of the day right uh, zoom again um, you know if the market comes back and everything is in the world and Pfizer again this morning came out uh, kind of reiterating their vaccine showing about 95% uh, effectiveness, which is awesome. This is exactly what everybody wants to hear. But it, again, today the stock did not go down, which is very, very important. When that news came out, um, you know, several weeks ago, that the stock got killed, right? I mean, the stock got really, really started getting really hit really for, for two weeks straight. But today's news, the stock didn't get hit, which again, which means sellers are comfortable. But more important, we started watching towards the end of the month. Um, they were coming, I think, the December 31st expiration. They started coming for the 450s and the 475 calls. So it's something definitely to watch uh, for the next couple of days. If it could just get above this whole channel here, it might actually wake up. It's not for tomorrow, but you never know, right? You absolutely never know as well. So uh, let's talk about today's session. I, I, I traded a little sloppy today. Um, and we had some phenomenal moves, and I butchered a bunch of them. And I've, I've always said this. You know, I don't care how much how 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 good you trade or how, how think you good you, you trade or you're you're gonna have a you you have a sloppy day. You're gonna overthink things. Um, you're going to mismanage positions. You're you're going to overthink a bunch of things. And I, I kind of did that. Um, QS actually saved me towards the end after hours of all thing. Um, caught a QS on a pretty big spike. But the point is, I, I think there's days when you're going to be a trader and, you know, you go on a good run and you stay on that good run. A lot of times you think that, you know, you could do whatever you want, right? Um, and I, I'm always at the point of, I'm always thinking to myself, safety first. So sometimes when you think safety first, knowing that, again, the cues were up uh, nine days in a row, a lot of times you're going to turn around and say, you know what, let me play the safe card, right? Let me not be aggressive. And unfortunately, technicals sometimes, they're there for us to take advantage of. And, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. FSLY today, perfect example. FSLY had, when I'm talking about a repeat $100 calls over and over and over again. So I got long on the breakout, right? And it stalled. It literally stalled. And I sold the break even, Right? No harm, no foul, because I figure, listen, if it's going to go on a big run and it stalls out the breakout, you got to get out. Stock takes out the high again. I get long again. And again, we're starting to see 100 call buyers over and over and over. I'm talking about literally in 5, 10 minutes, we saw 10, 10 orders, right? All over sweeps on the, on the near term uh, 100 calls. And for some reason, I played it safe when it stalled out again. I played it safe. I took a little bit of a loss on it. And then I watched the stock literally go up five bucks. And, you know, it's one of those situations you say to yourself, well, I read the order flow and it was fine. Okay. Um, I saw the stock stall out, especially 
uh, after all those aggressive call buyers came in and I did the right thing, it's fine. But when you finally turn around and you break down what you actually did, right? And again, there, looking back at it, it's, it's all hindsight, right? You know, if I would have sold, if I would have sold in the stock with a tank $5, I would have said, look, that's a great read. Well, I wouldn't have said it, I would have thought to myself. But I would have thought to myself, that's a great read. I saw the sellers, they wouldn't budge after the 52 week high, I did the right thing. But when you break down the trade and you see the aggressive aggressiveness, especially in the options market, and this kind of tortured me the whole day, I sat there and I, and I was really, really replaying the trade in, in my head. And I, the, the most upsetting part was it's, it wasn't a, nothing to do with the money. The money comes, the money goes. Uh, you'll have a thousands and thousands of trades throughout your career. But what bothered me the most was that I sat there and I needed to be perfect right? We put so much pressure on ourselves as traders that we have to be perfect all the time. Because again, the ramifications of not being perfect uh, are pretty bad, right? I mean, you, you could lose money and spiral out of control very, very quickly. Then you're playing catch up and all that good stuff. So I sat there and the one lesson that I, I, I really picked up on over and over again, and that is if you start seeing a rinse repeat buyer, especially in the options market, over and over and over again. I think the moral of the story is you have to let the, let the stock play out a little bit. And the fact that I sat there and I, and I said to myself, let me be a little more cautious, right, was in hindsight the right thing to do. But when the market is dictating, right, price action is dictating. We say this all the time. Our opinions don't mean nothing. But when the price target and when the price is being appreciated over and over again in the options market, I think again, this is where our opinions and our um, our process kind of takes a step back, and you said let the stock play out. So it's something I kind of uh, I'm going to store in my in my piggy bank, in my uh, excuse me, in my in my memory bank, and going forward, anytime I see like a really aggressive call buyer uh, in the name, especially in such a short period of time, you know, have to give it the benefit of the doubt. So that was kind of my uh, lesson for the day. Uh, anyway, so make a long story short. Uh, other than that, some crazy aggressive moves here. Um, Tesla never got, you know, Tesla never got to uh, the 609. So this is where I really wanted to buy the stock just because this is where we broke out yesterday. It never got there, but uh, red to green was on the table. Uh, Netflix, uh, you know, only put up a $2 candle and never confirmed the opening range highs. Uh, Apple got to 125. I still like Apple. I mean, I still really, really like Apple. I think this could be a day away. Uh, ASN, I'm, I'm going to watch this thing for the next couple of days. T towards the end of the day, uh, a buyer came in. I think it was a February 40 buyer came in. This is a recent IPO. I uh, want to keep an eye on this. CHGG uh, never confirmed. Uh, this was huge. Uh, ZS182 needs to build to wake up. Right. So here is ZS. It took out the 182. I mean, look at this candle, guys. It took out this whole channel here, 182, and went right to the 52-week high of roughly 89 and a half. Uh, it just needs one more day to get through, but it's an absolute huge move. Congratulations to you guys who caught that. Uh, PDD was just out of its mind as well. Uh, 151, initially I put it by accident, 150 needs to build. Uh, 151 needs to build. Uh, PDD went nuts. I mean, absolutely nuts. Here was PDD, same thing, right? Here's PDD. Uh, it literally went from uh, 151 uh, all the way to 161 and a half, literally on one candle, a uh, huge, huge move, big, big uh, call buying came in there as well. Again, right? That's the, that's the moral of the story. When you get call buyers, right? That's what's going to happen. And that's exactly what we saw on PDD and FSLY. Uh, yeah, huge move, take on the way on PDD, big move on ZS. Yep, this is it, right? Right? This is what we're talking about. FSLY, 9720, 9750. Every time I, I just look at that over and over again, I just keep, keep on getting, <laughs> just keep on getting angry and angry. But again, what's done is done. It is what it is. I learned, uh, I learned for the future. Again, for all you guys who did catch it, congratulations. I completely butchered, uh, butchered the trade there. And uh, yeah, this is what we're talking about. Repeat buyers coming in. I, I, I like this formation here. Uh, and this is kind of what really helped me throughout. You know, this is what helped me uh, after the close here. 58 potential after hours play, had a six squeeze. And this thing took out 58, um, took out 58. There was a little bit of profit taking after the close, took out 58 and just, well, you see it, it's a $67. Um, I took like a buck and change on it literally very, very quickly, which kind of, I just didn't anticipate a $7 move, uh, but it is what it is. So, you know, again, 
uh, this trading thing of ours, it's, it's always a learn in progress. Okay, I don't care how long uh, you've been trading. Uh, it doesn't make a difference how smart you think you are or how seasoned you are. The market will always tell you who is in charge. And again, you could, you could do two things. You could ignore it and be, continue to be sloppy, or you can embrace it, embrace the journey, and move forward. Okay, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.